example. So there is no correlation whatsoever between being a, what they call a super user, meaning being very good with computers and getting into this industry. What's required is commitment. And that's the general theme we see. There are opportunities for our work and careers everywhere, if you know where to look. That's easier said than done, especially in our fast-paced and constantly changing world. Marianne Fairmouth is talking to experts, employers, and job seekers to bring you insight and understanding about what's possible. This is Career Can Do, where we're navigating the new work world. Welcome to the Career Can Do podcast a podcast dedicated to helping you navigate the new work world. My name is Marianne Fairmouth. I'm an executive recruiter, corporate trainer, career coach, author of seven books. And today I am just delighted to have on my show a gentleman that is really facilitating a need that is so much in demand these days. Juby Vasilius is a managing partner of a company called Yellow Tail Tech. I was so excited to have him on the show today. Because what Juby's company does is he helps those people that want to get into IT but have no IT training. And right now, with so many companies reorganizing, cutting back, closing, and people are trying to decide how they're going to transfer their skills or how they're going to get into something else, the IT demand is real. And the IT industry is hot and only going to get hotter. So, without further ado, and that incredibly long introduction, help me welcome Juby Basilius. Juby, say hello to everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here today. So, yeah, that's what we do. We, we help people with no IT background get into this industry that's growing exponentially. That's our niche. That is wonderful. Well, I think you certainly have a niche that is very much in demand. And I was just telling you in the blue room before we started re- uh, recording, I had two companies today tell me they weren't going to consider candidates because they didn't have the IT background or the strong IT variable that was so important in this position or the positions that they had. So I know you're a Maryland-based tech expert and you've been around and, and your company's been around since 2016, but tell us about your journey into IT. I know it started way before COVID and that's that's real interesting, but tell us about your journey into IT and you know why did you use this niche to get into? Yes. Well, I went to school for IT. I went to University of Maryland. I got a degree in management information system. And after graduating, of course, I went into the job market. And I realized that not only I needed a degree, but I needed to have something more, which is a specialized set of knowledge. So I was talking to a friend And they told me about this particular operating system that's very heavily used in a big enterprise called Linux. And then I went, I did my research. I found a mentor to train me specifically around that operating system. So from there, I got into this very particular niche. And throughout the years, I was helping my friends get into this. So my friends and family member. So that's why before we we officialize our business in 2016, I was always helping people around me get into IT and this particular niche called Linux, Linux system administration. So in 2016, I decided with my wife, I said, you know what, let's actually go in and formalize this and offer it to more people. So that's how we got into this. But when we got into it, we specifically wanted to help people with no IT background because this is where we saw the demand, the growing demand. Because a lot of training centers, they train people that happen to have no IT background, but their programs weren't tailored specifically for people with no IT background. So that's what we actually went ahead and and did. Okay. If somebody comes to you, Juby, and they have no IT background and they want to enlist in your program, how long does it typically take for them to go through the program and come out with a certification? Well, to get the certification, it takes around six months because we, first of all, we have two programs. One is six months long, one is nine months. But I always say this is a year commitment because not only you need to get certified, you need to start gathering the hands-on knowledge. This is why not only we train you, but we make sure uh, you get certified, but we also make sure 
you get access to an internship so you can start getting the hands-on. Because it doesn't matter how much you know, if you're not able to articulate hands-on knowledge to the, uh, your future employer, it will be tricky for you to get a job. So between a training, getting certified, getting some hands-on knowledge, getting support from our career success team, it's a 10 to 12 months commitment. Glad to hear you say you have an internship because I know as a recruiter, I hear clients asking me, well, great, Marianne, he's got a degree or certification, but he has, he has he actually worked in it. So the fact that your program offers that internship, I think is important. Now, you say that your focus, uh, you mentioned this just a minute ago, that is, is in the Linux operating system, but also it's AWS cloud computing. But tell me what the application is of the Linux operating system. What is it used for? Yes. So... If you have a computer, you probably are using an operating system called Microsoft or an iOS, um, some sort of Apple product. Well, Linux is just an operating system that's used in enterprise environment. Let's say you go to Google and they have thousands and thousands of servers. These servers run a different type of operating system, an enterprise level operating system, and it's typically Linux. So what I train people for is to be able to get jobs specifically in a big environment that actually manage those, uh, those servers that run the operating system called Linux. And the reason why we also went into cloud computing, specifically AWS cloud computing, it's because AWS is run 100% on Linux. So Amazon in general, all their servers, they run Linux. Okay. So our people who graduate from our program, they are able to manage those operating system and enterprise environments. Now, what if there's a person, but they're on the fence about doing this. They have a job, they work eight to five, nine to five, but in the evening, they're really looking and investigating online classes in the evening in the IT area. Does your company offer those in the evening or how flexible are you for somebody's schedule? Or somebody, say somebody works, say somebody works afternoon shift, say somebody works from from three to midnight, they want to do it early in the morning. I mean, do you have programs that work with people's schedules or how does that work? Yeah, we have a hybrid model where there is some live lecture and there is some work you do on your own, but our students, they have to be available in the evening. Most of our programs, they are delivered. At least the live portion is delivered between 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. So there is a restriction. So not everyone's schedule will be able to fit in, in our offering. And I'm not a real IT geek kind of person. I mean, I know enough to get by, but Juby, how difficult is it to pivot from into IT from a non-technical background? Say you have a degree in sociology or say you have a degree in business and you want to do more in the IT. How difficult is it to do that? Well, I can tell you most of my success stories People who actually went through my program have absolutely no IT background. So there is no correlation whatsoever between being what they call a super user, meaning being very good with computers and getting into this industry. What's required is commitment. And that's the general theme we see. The only thing, though, we do is that we assess your what they call computer knowledge and computer and internet knowledge. It's basically... You don't have an IT background, but you are able to move around a computer. You can print something, you can make some Google searches, you can move around and do things. But once you have that level, that base level, we can work with you, we can level you up. So you don't need any type of IT background at all. If you come to us, you were in in the humanities, you were in the medical field, it's not a problem because our programs is built to actually set the foundation to actually build you from there. We emphasize a lot on foundational knowledge. This is also why our programs are longer than most programs are. Okay. And then if somebody does come and take your classes in the evening and they go online, is it like actually having instructors talking online, but are the classes real big? Or say, for example, you've got somebody who's not quite understanding what the professor or the teacher is, is going through. Is it a program that they could put in the chat questions, ask questions, or is there enough of of that interaction professor and the student that the student feels like his particular question will get answered? Definitely. We've actually addressed that in multiple ways. First, like I said, we have a hybrid model where 
before showing up to class, there are some pre-work you need to do. So that way you show up to class with your questions and ready to engage and ask very intelligent questions about the material at hand. So now you have live lectures with the instructor. Not only those live lectures, you can engage with the instructor, but those live lectures are recorded. So you can go back to them at your own pace. That's one way we do uh, We We support you. And also there is a forum where your questions are answered within five to 10 minutes by either a peer or a teacher assistant or your instructor uh, themselves. And also we have support sessions that are uh, scattered mm -hmm. all over the week for you to be able to show up and mm -hmm. actually get a live instructor ready to support you. And on the weekends, we have review sessions. This is where you come in with your questions. You always have an instructor ready to support you on Saturdays and Sundays. So we have a great deal of support outside of the live lectures to be able to support you along the way. This is what we see works, especially with someone who have no IT background. They need that extra support, that extra help. That's great. All right, and getting back to the internships that you offer. I mean, I can't tell you how important that is as a recruiter because if somebody, one of my clients sees that somebody has also been on an internship in addition to having a certification, that makes them a much more desirable commodity. But let me ask you this question. When these people go on these internships, do oftentimes they get hired by the company they're on the internship with? Does that ever happen? Yes, it happens. But because we have internship with uh, different companies, it depends. It depends if the company they end up getting the internship with have the need for that particular person at the time. So we usually use that internship to leverage, to help them build their resume, to go out there and get a job. So getting hired with the company they get the internship is around 5%, okay. not any more than that. All right. Well, I know your company was started in 2016, and I know you've grown considerably post-COVID. Do you see that since COVID, the demand for IT professionals has really increased? I mean, I do, as I've been a recruiter for a long time, over 30 years, and I'm getting more and more job search assignments for IT people. But do you think, obviously, that it's you know increased since COVID, but also do you believe it's only going to continue to increase down the road? Yes, I believe it's only going to continue, especially, especially in the area of cloud computing. And especially in the U.S., there's a shortage at any given time in the year. There's a shortage of about 40,000 cloud computing experts, meaning, let me give you another example. AWS cloud, AWS cloud is growing at a 40% year over year, and they project that for the next five years to keep going. So the demand for cloud computing, the growth of cloud computing is going at an exponential rate. But training centers are not able to even keep up with training people, enough people for the demand. So yes, especially in a Linux that powers the cloud and cloud computing itself, I see growth for the next five years at least. And why is it that the cloud is becoming almost like a household word? I mean, everything is about cloud, this, <laughs> cloud, that. Why is that? I mean, what does that mean exactly? Uh, for a simple reason. There are two ways really to manage IT infrastructure. It's either you build your own infrastructure in-house or you buy infrastructure as needed. That's all cloud computing means. It means that you are buying infrastructure as you need it. So a startup today, they have two ways to build their infrastructure, to run their code, to run their website. A company like Netflix, they are growing so fast that they are not interested in building their own data center with their own servers and manage their own people. So what they do is they go to AWS and they say, I'm going to use your infrastructure and I'm going to pay you per hour, per use, and according to the space I use on your servers. So it's called infrastructure as code. So they just use and pay for exactly the amount they need. So that's the new model. So a startup now going into business, they don't have to have capital expenditures for $100,000 to build their own servers. They just buy, let's say, $1,000 or $2,000 worth of infrastructure as they need it from a company like AWS Cloud Computing. Okay, you wonderful. see? I see. Okay. Well, Juby, I think your company is 
one that I'm thrilled to promote. I think you're offering a service and training that is really important and only going to get more important in the future. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? You can go to yellowtel.tech. You can Google us on yellowtel.tech. You can go on Facebook. This is always the same handle, yellowtel.tech on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Google. We are all over the internet, really. All right. Well, also, if you're driving right now and you haven't written that down, all this information will be on my website. But today, we've had the pleasure of having Juby Vasilius on Career Can Do. He's offering a service that is so in demand. And as an executive recruiter, I will tell you that this is a, is a skill set that is only going to get more and more in demand and really necessary for the new work world. So look up Juby. He's a wonderful man. He's got a great program. He's got so many great reviews on his site. And uh, Juby, if somebody's on the fence about having a or going forward with an IT career, in one sentence, what would you tell them? Just do it? <laughs> Just do it, but don't do it for the money. Do it because you really are eager for change. A lot of people come in this business because there is a lot of money to be made, but you have to enjoy the work as well. That's the first thing I would tell anyone considering this. Well, I have to have the passion. I think the passion yes. and purpose in anything is going to make yes. that longevity journey sustainable. Okay, if you're just doing it for reasons that are not about passion and purpose, and, oh, and yeah. at the end of the day, you know, making a contribution too, I think might be a little part of that. I think you know you, you want to think twice about it. But anyway, Jimmy's got a great program. I support him 100. percent We're thrilled to have you today. Again, this is Marianne Fairmount. This is Career Can Do. Please sign up for our podcast on the nine podcast channels. We come out twice a month. And uh, we always have interesting people like Juby on our show. So, again, thanks, Juby. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Marianne. We thank you for tuning in to our Career Can Do podcast. We make no guarantees on results for your particular quest, but we hope you enjoy the information presented. Thank you.